So I have some bismuth tin alloy, 40-60s, 40% bismuth, 60% tin, heating up here on my stove. And remember, bismuth is the same stuff that's in your Pepto-Bismol. This alloy melts, melts at a very low temperature, and I have the video sped up here. This alloy melts at about um, 200 degrees Celsius, about 390, 380, give or take Fahrenheit. Well, it's pretty low temperature, far below the smoke temperature of the peanut oil that I'm using. I use the peanut oil kind of as a um, flux and to prevent oxidation. Basically, oxygen is going to try to react with the bismuth. And so I'm trying to prevent that so I don't have any discoloration, which isn't bad. I mean, the, the blue oxides of bismuth are really pretty, but I'm trying to see if I can get a nice quality ring out of this. I'm just curious if people can just cast rings with their stove. It seems like a pretty fun little experiment that you could do with your kids. I mean, it's still really hot, but you know, it's hotter than 2000 degree temperatures of like copper and silver and things like that. So pretty easy experiment that you can do at home. And I'll put a link if you're curious about the ingot that I bought online that has a very low melting temperature, but pretty fun experiment. So what I'm doing right now is I'm moving it around to make sure it's not still crystallizing. So if you look really close at the metal and you move it, you can see what look like snowflakes forming in the metal if it's too cool. So I'm heating it up to about the flat, the smoke temperature of peanut oil, which is about 450, um, 450 Fahrenheit. And you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm trying to pour off the oil. I don't want the oil to go in my mold. So I wanna make sure I get a clean pour of metal, clean pour of this liquefied bismuth tin alloy. And so right now I'm trying to see how much I need to pour out until I get to the metal. So I'm slowly dripping off this oil. It'd probably be better if I had something prepared to pour this into, but this piece of cardboard works fine. Yep, and I'm to the metal. So now I just pour into my mold. And it doesn't take much mold. I mean, this, this is a very small amount of material. This ring that I'm casting is probably about 10 milliliters worth of um, liquid metal. So a very small amount. Look in my mold and you can see that uh, I poured a little extra metal there just to make sure it completely filled the mold. And let's open this thing up and see how it looks. Just testing to see if the material is cool because the stuff in the mold is going to be roughly the same temperature. It's still hot, but I can touch it for a second or two until it burns my hand. Not a big deal. I use a little twist tie to keep my mold from moving or wiggling around. You can use a rubber band if you want. Um, this clay is pretty good at keeping the heat inside, so it doesn't really matter. It looks good so far, kind of hard to tell. Looks like everything kind of stuck to the mold. It's pretty hot. Yeah, it looks complete. Just needs to be cleaned up, some rough spots. That's normal. If you look really close, you can tell it's that same ring. It's the wedding ring my wife got me. It has that beautiful little oval, symbolizes forever. Some of you might recognize that ring. It's a very famous ring in some circles. But yeah, perfect copy. Just need to clean it up. All right, here's my bismuth clone. It's a little bit hard to polish. As you can see, there's just, when you try polishing it, this metal is so soft that every time you polish, you just leave marks, unless you have a really, really soft cloth to polish with. I tried a number of different cloths and they all leave marks. <clears throat> Incredibly soft metal, but it's still kind of cool how easy you can cast stuff with. So it might be better to like cast paperweights and things you're not gonna touch, because I imagine if you casted a ring out of this stuff, it'd be very 
um, get very damaged in a very short amount of time. And there's a lot of imperfections that I was kind of scared to <clears throat> to grind off, just because the ring is so sh thin. Like this one's um, sterling silver, so it's a little stronger. But you can still see I have some delf clay in that crack, and I need to clean that out. Um, kind of almost have that detail here. I just didn't push the delf clay into there to create the negative mold when I was making the mold. So I could probably do a better job with that in the future. But you can easily, as you can see, cast stuff from your stovetop if you have the bismuth tin alloy. And it's fairly shiny. Just not as shiny as, you know, tungsten or silver. But, well, maybe it is a little shinier than silver. Just depends on how recently you shine the silver, right? Cool.